We're back with more Bill Paxton Pinball. I'm sorry I can't show you the board yet. Um, uh, I want the final board to be a surprise, so I'm going to wait till the machine's actually done. It'll probably be pretty soon, probably mid-February. February. Anyway, here is the Titanic uh, True Lies lane, and what happens is it sits back here, and there's a ramp that goes on, and there's going to be that lane changer thing here. And if it goes through here, it goes into the Titanic maze that I built. And if it's deflected back through here by the lane changer, or if your shot's just not quite powerful enough, you'll go into the true lies thing. So since there's really not much room for switches, I'm using optical sensors. And what I've done here is I've gotten one of these, uh, you know, things from Radio Shack. Uh, infrared, not infrared, infrared <laughs> emitter and detector. And, you know, Radio Shack's not the cheapest place, but hey, you know they'll work together and even get the schematics, so why not? So... What I did was I just used some extra pieces of acrylic I had laying around to make these little uh, sensors and the ball passes through. And uh, as you can see I've put a, a resistor across the um, the detector there because I found that's the best way to get the voltages I need. So how it works is this plugs into a jack on the board so you can remove everything. And it sends 3.3 uh, .3 volts into the emitter which is that part right there and then that's picked up by the detector. And how the detector works is it goes into the switch bank, although it's inverted. Now on Bill Paxton Pinball, all the switches work pretty much this way. You've got positive 3.3 volts, goes through a pull-up resistor, usually 10K, then it goes into a switch. And then this also goes to the CPU, so to speak, CPU. And then there's a switch, let me see if I can draw it correctly here, close enough, then it goes to ground. And uh, when something on the board gets hit, like a ball impact or really anything, the switch closes. And then this used to be high, a 1. When the switch closes, it goes to ground, making it a 0. And the reason you have the pull-up resistor is otherwise, if you hook these up, you'd have a short circuit. Now, this is the opto sensor is a little different. Um, the uh, opto sensor itself, when it sees infrared light, it allows current through, right? So... The infrared light, it's always on, so this is always letting current through, so this is always a zero because it goes right to ground, right? So one thing that's a little different is on my board, since usually one indicates no switch and zero indicates ground, I actually invert it in the polling program just because I like the idea of one better for <laughs> the switch being on. So in this one, actually, one is off and zero is on so in my program it's reversed to one being off zero being on so I have to actually look for a zero instead of one there does that make any sense well I don't know I don't know it's just the way I think I just like I like I like one instead of zero for switch on call me old-fashioned so yeah that's the ramp and uh, there's also going to be one of these opto sensors down here for the true life thing but it's going to be top and bottom because there's a graphics on the side